Hi there, my name is Don Boudreaux. I'm a professor of economics at George Mason University and a senior fellow at George Mason's Mercatus Center. And I'm here today to talk about Adam Smith and his views on trade and the economy. So let's get started. Um, so this, this question is, is, uh, in a way asking, or I can, I can't answer this question without giving my own commentary on the current state of the economics profession. By and large, economists on, on the whole, again, there are exceptions to every rule, but by and large, economists have a better understanding of the way markets work. Uh, in general, and of the benefits of trade in particular, than does any randomly chosen non-economists. Now, that's a pretty low standard, I have to say. Uh, uh, while there are a lot of non-economists who, who deeply understand markets and trade, uh, the general level of, un of popular understanding of markets and trade is, is, pretty, is pretty poor. There's no criticism of ordinary people. It's no crime to be to, to be uh, ignorant of economics, uh, but but economists in general understand it better. Right? But it's getting worse among economists. Uh, economists don't today spend enough time pondering the big questions. They don't they don't read the wealth of nations. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but my guess is that. Of all the people in the world today alive who have a PhD in economics, uh, uh, the percentage of them who have read *The Wealth of Nations* cover to cover is probably in the single digits, uh, and, and maybe probably even the lower, the low single digits. Uh, so the, the economists aren't so much scholars anymore. They don't ponder the big questions. They've become narrow researchers. Uh, the notion is that. Well, they want economics to be a science. I, and by the way, I do think economics is a science. But a lot of economists say want economics to be a science of the sort that it can't be. A science that much more akin to physics or chemistry. An observational science where you just look at fairly simple, uh, objective bits of reality and you report on what you, you see. That's not what economics is or what it can be if it's going to be successful as a science. Economics is a science of society. Society is an incredibly complex phenomenon. It has billions of people uh, operating in it, each with his or her own unique preferences, each with his or her own unique bits of, 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 of knowledge and hopes and dreams and expectations, all of which are changing. And, and, and to imagine that you can just observe with a very thin theoretical structure uh, and just measure things with statistics and data. Uh, I think that is to, to give the appearance of doing science when in fact what you're doing is basically witchcraft. Uh, you're, you're, you're observing things that can be easily measured just because they're easily measured. Uh, and although it, it looks scientific, it's not really scientific because the people who, a lot, not all the people, but, but too many of the economists who do this don't bother to think about, about where these data are coming from. What is the unseen behind the, the, the data? Uh, to be a good economist, you have to understand not just statistics. Statistics, uh, don't get me wrong, statistics are in, incredibly important. I, don't, I would never want to give up having access to statistics, but they don't speak for themselves. Data never speak for themselves. Facts don't speak for themselves. Uh, so we need statistics. We need also a deep understanding of economic theory. Uh, we need a philosophical appreciation for the foundations upon which society, both private society and both the, the politics of society are built. All the greatest economists, all, certainly all the ones whom I admire, are individuals who are, or were, many of them are dead, <laughs> steeped not just in narrow economic theory, but steeped in intellectual history, steeped in history in general, steeped in economic history, steeped in philosophy, steeped in political science and political philosophy. 
uh, steeped in literature, because literature gives you insights into the, 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 the human psyche and the human condition. I see way too many young economists who, who look at data and then draw conclusions from the data, which strike me as just preposterous. But, the, but if, if you don't understand the economic theory uh, that is necessary, in my view, to process and understand economic data, you can have the best econometrics in the world. You can be the most brilliant econometrician who's ever breathed. And if you don't understand the economics, uh, you're going to get it wrong. You will not be able to tell good stories uh, uh, with the data that you process. You will not draw the right conclusions from the data that you process. And so uh, uh, I am distressed that so few young economists today actually master economics, especially basic price theory, basic mi microeconomics of the sort that was standard fare among a lot of economists until uh, through the through the through the the, the 1970s uh, the, the works of people like Armin Alchin and Ronald Coase uh, uh, Jim Buchanan uh, uh, these Harold Demsets the works of these people are just largely ignored or, or, or laughed at as being oh that's all that's all hat we're onto something new we're onto doing fancy econometrics and we don't need all that stuff. They weren't really scientists in, in, in our sense because we, we have data, we're gonna process data. And by all means process data, data processing is important, but data processing absent good theories is, is, is pointless.